Hi there, Johnny Daniel, independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! How are you? It's Wednesday at 7. Are you ready? I'm going to demonstrate some magic tonight. We're going to be doing a new technique. Well, I think I've done it once before actually. So, an almost new technique um, called Joseph's Coat, believe it or not. And that is what we are creating tonight. And believe it or not, this piece with the trees on there that starts as a white piece of cardstock whisper white to be exact so that's what we're going to be creating tonight there's a few other promotions i'll be talking about throughout the evening but i'm going to get you down so we can get to creating and get to going and see how we can do magic so hold on just a sec If you're on with me, please comment, say hello while I get adjusted. Sorry about the back and forth. So for tonight, we're going to be doing the a technique called Joseph's Coat of Many Colors. So that is what we've got, I've got in store for you tonight. So... Let me get everything set up and ready to go. Um, while I'm doing that, I will remind you that, let me scooch a few things, hold on. I will remind you that if you want the fall paper pumpkin um, 20 Cracker Jack box with autumn theme, Thanksgiving theme, or Halloween theme, um, if you would like that kit, then guess what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to hurry and sign up quick because tomorrow is when they charge the cards and do the deadlines and all that kind of stuff. So we need to make sure to get on there and get things rolling. Um, let's see, what else? Um, this video, I will be editing the title of it so you have... All of the um, uh, host codes and all that kind of stuff to be able to order for the week and all the details for the create with me and all that fun stuff so we will get there um, let's see here if you're on with me please comment say hello hey Carol hey Sherilyn hey Lise um, let's see who's my fourth Serene maybe not sure so all right, so for tonight, um, we've already talked about the paper pumpkin, so I don't need to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, couple quick things. So last week I told you about this get and go starter kit promotion, 1st through 30th. So there's a couple things I want you to think about if you want the discount, if you have $99 worth of product at least, or very close to on your list, this is a good time to um, sign up. There is no negative if you drop. There is no negative if you just get the kit and never do anything else. There's no negative if you go into full-time business. There's no negative if you do whatever you want within reason <laughs> because it's called independent for a reason. So the minimum you can do to stay active is 300 a quarter, about 100 bucks a month. If, and you can go as crazy as you want. You could do a million dollars a year or you can do, you know, $300 a quarter. It's up to you. But I did want to show you what this promotion looks like, okay? So $99 sign up, no shipping, still tax, because we can't get away from that. $107, give or take where you are for tax. So anywhere from let's say just under 110, okay? So on top of the $99 sign up, you get $125 product worth of product, and then you get business products and catalogs and all kinds of other stuff. Right now they're doing a bonus on top of, on top of that. So on top of that, you also get for free the stamp set Queen's and, Queen Anne's Lace, if I can say that. So much love. 
the rhinestones. Let's see here. And then Coastal Cabana and Granny Apple Green, eight pieces of cardstock already ready to go for um, note cards. Okay. No, there's not envelopes with that, but this little bonus, shall we say, is just under $50. I think it comes to like $47 or something like that. Um, so you're getting, instead of $125, you are getting $177, $175, sorry, um, give or take about five bucks. The only thing is, the kit, you can completely choose anything you want, and let's see, this obviously is a preset thing, so just an FYI, wanted to let you know. So, let's get to creating, shall we? So, tonight, here's the glorious thing we are doing. <laughs> so, um, I do have... Tonight I have tonight is the deadline for Saturday Saturday's um sessions for card class. Um Saturday 9 to 12 or 3 to 6, we will be doing a curtain fold card, a theater pop-up card and a um backwards watercolor card and so if you don't have the information or want to come, please let me know. That's by midnight tonight. Needs to be time stamped for Wednesday to be able to qualify and reserve a seat for Saturday. Saturday afternoon, I only have one seat available. Saturday morning, I have three still available. So let me know what you want to do. Um, so let's see what else, my dears. While I'm thinking about it, and while I'm getting situated, you got to tell me. <laughs> I hope everybody's gotten their mini catalog, their holiday catalog. What's your favorite thing that you've either already ordered or is on your wish list and you're waiting for money to come in or you're waiting for it to come off back order or whatever the case may be? What is your thing that you are waiting to get? Or is it already your favorite? So... Just a question. Um, for me, because I have a piper in the house, anything plaid, for one. And for two, anything non-traditional Christmas. So, more landscape and that kind of stuff. I guess more winter instead of Christmas. Because then it can be used still in January when I have forgotten to get my cards out. Right? Okay. So, tonight... We're using the Winter Woods stamp set. We're using Beautiful Autumn for the sentiment. And let's get going, shall we? Let's hope so, huh? So, um, I have Thick whis Thick Whisper White. No. Thick Very Vanilla. Sorry about that. Thick Very Vanilla cardstock for our card base. This is cut at eight and a half by five and a half and is that right and then scored at <laughs> scored at four and a quarter yes that is right my brain okay we also have a piece of early espresso this is our outer mat cut at five and a quarter by four i believe and then this is our inner mat. This is Cajun Craze, a really great fall color, like a burnt orange. I call it our burnt sienna for, for um, crayon color. Hi, Iris. How are you, hun? Good to, good to hear from ya. Um, let's see. So this is cut at five by three and three quarter. We're not doing anything with these except for creating a framed look. And then last but not least, we have our Very Vanilla, and this is cut at three and a half by four and three quarters, or just simply cut three mats and make one smaller than the next, then the next, then the next. That's all I did. So, and then for the sentiment, I have a piece of Early Espresso to mat inside Very Vanilla, Oh, uh, you're probably going to ask me what size. I think this is three quarter by 
four or four and a quarter. And then this is like half inch by basically I took the words and figured out how much I wanted to mat and then I added to it. <laughs> so yes, that's how my brain works sometimes. So let's get to doing these very pretty trees, right? Okay. So how we do this. So the ink pads I have on my table are pumpkin pie because we're going to do the AC or no and the life is beautiful. Yep. Okay. Acorn. Got it. Yep. Beautiful autumn and winter woods, by the way. Um, so pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, cherry cobbler, and early espresso are on my table. So here's the deal though. So if you want these to be Christmas instead, then have these be blue colors or browns, depending, and then have the early espresso or have a black. Basically what you need for the overlay is anything super, super, super dark. Navy blue, night of navy, uh, early espresso, or um, the black, the memento would work, okay? Um, basic gray, if you put it on really heavy works, but honestly, I think it's too much ink. So, um, hey Serene, how are you? I love the poinsettia dice too, yes. Um, actually, that's going to be the bonus in your card class kit. So, um, so anyways, so the colors tonight though, pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, cherry cobbler, early espresso. If you want to substitute Mary Merlot for cherry cobbler, you can do that. Um, I picked the cherry cobbler because it had more of a brown undertone and Mary Merlot tends to have more of a purple undertone. That's the why, but do whatever, no problem. So we're going to start with our lighter color, pumpkin pie. You're going to need a sponge. This is our Create With Me project. So if you do this by Monday at 7, I know there's ruler on the paper, but here's what I did. I flipped it over because I had mess on the other side and it's metric. So I'm not helping myself tonight. Um, so if you do this project, this technique, and create with me, you need to post this in the pinned video, the saved video, this one. You need to post that by Monday night at 7.30 to qualify for the $5 off, okay? So you're going to start with your lightest color, and you're going to go fairly dark. And you're just going to kind of go pieces and parts. See, see how there's pieces and parts of color all over. So you want to really focus in, especially on where it's going to be stamped. Okay. So there's my orange, my pumpkin pie to be exact. Okay. Then we are grabbing our Cajun Craze. Use the same sponge, you're good. Here's why I have mess. <laughs> why I'm on the metric side. Our grid paper is inches on one side and centimeters on the other. So obviously I've been having fun in creating, which is why I cannot um, flip to the other side because it's really messy. So, um... So you just want to create a whole bunch of color and you want as little of the vanilla or white, depending on what you choose to do, coming through. If you are not doing fall, okay? I chose vanilla because it's got a little bit of a yellow undertone, that rich, deep um, tone that you'll get. But honestly, if you're doing something spring, summer, and you want those colors to be true instead of have a little bit of a yellow and a little bit of a softness to it, then what you want is the white. So you just got to pay attention to what you have for undertones in your paper when you're doing this. Hi, Carol. How are you? So... So yes, I know I could have used the grid paper to measure, but honestly, 
I have a mess on the other side and I'm on metric side and I didn't want to give it to you in centimeters. So there you go. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so cherry cobbler is where I'm at now. And I am, let's see, I've got a lot of Cajun craze right there. So I'm going to add some here. And I'm just filling in because I want there not to be really, see how it's lighter here? It's lighter here. I don't want that vanilla. I want the richness of it, but I don't want the brightness to be coming through. I want to make sure that I have my entire um, cardstock covered. Okay. So there we go. That's what we got. All right. So, and you know, if, if you get really messy when you create, then Hey, guess what you're going to do? You, I forgot. I want to stamp my sentiment while I'm here with the cherry cobbler open. Um, but if you're super messy when you create for one, you can also use a dauber. I didn't like it because it was smaller for one and for two it gave more definite marks and I wanted something more brush stroke across um, so for me the sponge was a better tool but up to you so you might want to grab a pair of gloves um, or have a sink candy depending on how you look at things you know it's just what it is we're bound to get messy at some point right Okay, so have a beautiful day is my sentiment that I just finished. And then we're gonna go back to here, okay? So now I'm grabbing my other tray. So I'm grabbing a little tray, paper plate, um, piece of copy paper, whatever to get that embossing powder back, funneled down into your little bottle. Um, so let's see, I'm using clear embossing powder. Okay, and Versamark to get that stuck. I've got my trees from Winter Woods, okay? And because it's a larger stamp, I'm going to stamp onto my stamp instead of my stamp onto the ink makes sense i hope and then i am grabbing this and i'm going to start on the side no you do not see anything because it's versamark it's a water staining or watermark so you're going to see a tiny bit but not hardly right which makes it interesting, but we'll get there. So I don't know if you can see a little bit here, there. Those are our trees. The idea for when you wet emboss is you stamp with a pigment ink, Versamark in my case, and then you sprinkle your powder on as quick as you possibly can. So that way you <laughs> Um, you can get the powder on. I'm just hitting this a couple times and here's the reason why. You need to make sure when you do this, you need to make sure that all your ink is completely dry. So let it just set for like a minute. Um, but you want to make sure that it's all completely dry so when you stamp with your Versamark and you do your embossing powder, you don't have a whole sheet of nothing but powder and your trees don't show up. You need to make sure that's dry enough. So, you know, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can wait a minute or two, go get a drink, come back, or you can also, um, what color powder? Clear, clear embossing powder, hen. Um, so you can either let it dry naturally for about a minute or two and honestly it was borderline almost dry which is why i flicked it a little bit um or you can grab your heat tool your embossing tool and let's see if i can get this in here mine has two clicks to it a high and a low so you could grab your low setting maybe 
and just real quick zap it and that way you would have um, it completely dry. So either way, not a problem for me. I would do a bunch of them and probably go do something else and come back and two days later maybe forget about it. I don't know. <laughs> so, so we're going to zap this with our heat tool. So we have used pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, cherry cobbler to be exact for the colors. We've stamped with our Versamark pad and you can see there how I'm starting to get a little bit of wet there. That is the emboss embossing powder starting to melt or to do what it's supposed to do. So you want to stamp with your Versamark and then sprinkle with clear embossing powder and then zap it with your heat tool and pray you've done everything right because you can't really see it until it's melted <laughs> so it makes life interesting doesn't it no problem though so we're gonna zap it zap it zap it and yes it's already pretty so if you wanted to stop here you can but the main part of the technique is coming up so Give me just a half a second to finish, and I will show you. Alrighty. Let's see, do we have it all? I think so. So we let that cool for a half a second. So basically what that means is, not that it's cool to the touch when I'm barely holding it. It's cool to the touch when I put it on the front of, back of my hand and I'm holding the middle point of it. I want no warmth coming out of this. Okay? That's the why. All right. So now as I'm waiting for that to cool a tiny bit, should be by now, but I have other things I can do. So hold on. Um, we're going to grab our stamp and seal and we're going to put a touch of glue adhesive, whatever you want to call it, on the back here. And we're going to stick this down in the middle. And I can't remember how much I cut, so I got to eyeball. There we go. And then these holiday rhinestones come in handy again because we're going to use the red to bring out. Now you can use the yellow. You know what? Let's use the yellow because we haven't. We used red on the last one. So let's use the almost orange, right? But hey. All right, so we've got that going. So there's our sentiment. This is definitely dry now. Yay. So we're going to grab our early espresso. You want to make sure there's plenty of ink in this guy, okay? If it looks like it might be kind of dry, put a little bit of ink in it because the more the merrier with this. Okay, I'm just getting rid of some of my excess ink right now. All right, so now, uh, same sponge, grabbing my early espresso and I am wiping over. This needs to be super dark, okay? The darker the better because this is kind of like an emboss resist. So where your powder is or where your trees are is going to mean that you have hardly any, except for in between branches and that kind of stuff, you're gonna have hardly any um, espresso stuck to that and then it's gonna offset very nicely, right? As you can start to see. Okay, so you are making it as dark as you want until it's done. You will have some of the color still showing through no matter how dark it gets. It's kind of like when you, when you dye your hair really dark brown or black and still have a little bit of burgundy or a little bit of purple, there'll still be an undertone like when the sun hits it. So that's what we're going for here. This is where you get your fingers messy, as you can tell, <laughs> but that is okay. So I am just going over, 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 over. 
going over, over, over. And honestly, I like that little bit of how it does that because it looks to me to be almost like a natural shadow. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just doing until it's done. What that might be, I'm not sure. You want to make sure that you kind of stay going the same direction so you don't have stripes going up and down, across, all that kind of thing. But look at that and how gorgeous, right? If you want to take a paper towel, you can wipe off the excess if there is any. Um, this is something you want to leave to sit dry. Woo, fun stuff. So... We're gonna leave that set for half a sec. I'm gonna get a wipe for my fingers. Um, please, please, please get out of the habit of using your wipes for your blocks and your stamps. That's what a chamois is for. And here's the reason why. There's lint in these. So when you use your stamps, say I wipe off my block with my baby wipe, right? This sticker is going to pick up that lint and then guess what happens? It doesn't work as well next time and the next time and the next time and the next time. So you want to make sure that it's as clean as can be. So what I mean by the chamois is these little purple things. They come in a, in a rectangle that's I believe four by six. This is just a piece of it cut off. I use it all the time. Um, yes, it's stained, but honestly, I love it because there's no chemical. It's all just water. Rinse it out. If it's stained, whatever, it still works great. So, um, so I'm going to grab my card base, fold. Valley side is on the outside. Mountain is on the inside. I'm grabbing my early espresso. I'm flipping over and grabbing, grabbing my adhesive, getting this thing done, right? So we're going to grab here. Hit. I'm off center. It's okay. It's handmade, right? So, so we're grabbing here, grabbing here. We're gonna make all of it off center so that way it works com completely all right. All right, and then we are grabbing this. So there you go. Um, because of all the ink, <laughs> you're gonna want to go like this so you don't have fingerprints all along, <laughs> which I do. So just saying. Now we're going to grab some dimensionals and put these words on. I did not do dimensionals on the original one, but I had to make it different. I mean, come on. So we've got our dimensionals. I'm going to grab three, throw them on here. Peel the backs off. If you cannot get the backs off, throw your thumbnail down in the middle. It, one side of it will pop up and off we go. Okay. And since I did my trees kind of crooked, I'm just going to go along the bottom and hide my crookedness. <laughs> and there we go. Awesome, right? So you can see this is a tad bit darker. But this is called, um, if you're looking it up, this is called Joseph's Coat. And... Tons of color, tons of possibilities, depending on what season you're in. It's not only for fall. You could do it in blues. You can do it in pinks. You could, you name it. It's, it's great for like beach cards. It's great for anything that you want that brilliant, deep kind of color to. Kind of cool, right? So I actually saw one where somebody did like a zebra stripe through it and then had a face coming out of a zebra. So um, there's all kinds of possibilities. You just gotta get in there, get your fingers messy and get to creating. So I hope you enjoyed this. 
Have a great night. Follow me, stampingwithjohnny.com. This will be pinned to the top of the page and all the um, links and everything else will be up there for you. And go create. You have till Monday night to create something similar to this technique wise. So you need a piece of white or vanilla cardstock. You need a whole bunch of color. You need a sponge, clear embossing powder with a Versamark or some kind of pigment pad, and then some kind of dark to overlay. Okay. Have a great evening and see you soon if you've signed up for card class. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.